it has taken me. Oh, this is my favorite pillow. Oh, look, I didn't even realize I still had these on. So I put these on earlier. I had these earrings. They are so cute. The detail is crazy. They look like wings. Look at the detail. Look at that. These earrings are nuts, right? So I used to wear them. And then I went, I kept, I, you know, I keep going up. And, but now they fit in. Because I, I had this size. I don't know what size this is. I think it's a, um, I don't know. I don't, don't give me to lines, you know? I don't even know. But now it fits in my hole. I used to wear them as earrings. And then I hadn't been able to wear them because the way that they're shaped right there. See how they're shaped? It's like a little thin piece, but then it gets wide right there. So I couldn't really wear them, but now I can. I have some other hoops too that I couldn't wear either because they're, they're so cute. Let me let me go show them. Let me show the let me show you them. Hold on. Let me put on my socks. Put on my good luck socks. I have some protect your energy shop socks. I need to put those on. Super conductivity. Okay. We're gonna try this again, bitch. <laughs> We're gonna try this again. So I got my I'm not going to cut anything out, okay? But the last time, I don't like them because, see, the last time they were on the bottom, but now they're like up here at the top. See? Protect your energy. You see? Oh, and face the nation. Some more merch. <laughs> Some more merch. So... What are we down here to talk about, girl? Girl, Jill Scott. Okay, I was gone for like two hours. I come back to the internet in the morning. No, no less. It happened in the morning. It started all in the morning. Jill Scott tweeted this supportive tweet about Chris Brown, which... I don't know if it came where it came from. I don't know why she felt she needed to do it. I know he's been arguing with Quavo. It, and that stems from Karuchi. He wrapped his ass up. It stems from Karuchi. We know Karuchi's restraining order against Christopher Maurice Brown was expired in 2022. Just expired, child. And now he back online mentioning her and talking uh, talking about her. She might need to go have that revisited. Anyway, so he, the people said he was going too low. I say, oh, I said I was going to show you these other earrings here. They're elephants. You know, elephant is my favorite animal with a crow. Oh, I like them to go this way, though. But see, they're too, the way that they're shaped, they'll fall out because this part is too short. And so I, you can't really like put them all the way in because they'll look like that. And then the elephant will be upside down. You know what I'm saying? Because if I put them like this, anything, it, they will just come out, right? These are, they hang, the hang time is not going to, make them come out but these are cute aren't they love elephants they have another one where it's like a buddha sitting in the in this place right here they're so cute anyway um so jill scott got on the internet oh god let me go to her page child i was like this i said i go i go i log off a twitter for two hours, for two hours. And when I tell you, I love Twitter. I love Twitter. I do. A lot of people don't like Twitter and I don't understand it. I love Twitter. I've always loved Twitter. Twitter has been, I've been on Twitter since 2009. And I love it. I love it. it baby, if you follow me on Twitter for any amount of time, you have, I've, 
it is literally a, a blog for me and my thoughts and they be random as hell and I just tweet whatever the fuck I want to say. I don't even, sometimes I forget that people see the shit that I be saying. So I be like, let me, um, let me filter that a little bit. <laughs> let me keep that in the drafts for a little while. I don't feel like the people are ready for that just yet. Or oh, I should have put on a black um, nose ring or a gold one. Let me tell you about these scarves. You can get, I, I put them in my um, Amazon storefront. I think they were on sale last week, but it's like, I think it's like five scarves. It's one, two, three. I don't know, but the trim is different and they have really pretty design. It's just pretty design, but it, depending on the way you um, tie the scarf, it can go with different outfits because there's so many colors in it. I love it. I love it because I love to wear just like all black but then have this pop of color or have a pop of color on the shirt because I'll almost put on the red sweatshirt, the yes, all men red sweatshirt, but I, there's no red. If it was orange, my son has my orange hoodie, but I didn't feel like wearing a hoodie, right? I didn't want to wear a hoodie. I wanted to wear a crew neck. I love a crew neck sweatshirt. It's hot today too, but I just love the sweatshirt. I love a crew neck sweatshirt. Anyways, so let me go to Jill Scott. So I, um come off the um the internet for a couple hours and i come back and it's at six o'clock it's at three o'clock in the morning on my end so it was six o'clock i think she's on the east coast i'm pretty sure of it um she says um she tweeted it at, at six o'clock in the morning it was three o'clock my time girl oh and then she came back and said something girl i was like girl jill scott or what the fuck <laughs> okay we're just gonna talk about stuff i've been tweeting so that's what we're just gonna talk about okay um okay this was come on erica jill scott she tweeted this on 4 21 at 3 36 a.m it says um no i'm sorry it says, this is at 3.17 a.m. That was a response. 4.21, she adds Chris Brown is amazing. How does anybody sing like that? Dance, look, act, and rap like that. Beyond gifted. It appears exceptional people have to go through exceptional fire. There's nothing to debate. Girl, what was that for? Why? I don't understand. What was the purpose? And why couldn't you keep this to yourself? What is this public proclamation where you black women stand in front of abusive men and then say it's because you're standing up for his creativity and his artistic excellence? That's not what we're talking about. Why do you have to be like, well, how do you sing and act like that? Girl, he's being criticized for whatever. Why do you feel you need to say anything at that time? Like all of a sudden it's like, oh, everybody is, is coming down on him. Let me tweet this in support of Chris Brown. Girl, what? And she said, and then somebody came behind her and said, I think the women he abused would disagree. You know, this heifer said, I doubt it. I doubt it. My mother's ex-husband was a mean, violent human, and he could lay foundation better than anyone in my city. What he did with cement was all inspiring. He got, we got away. He got a raise and praise for his ability. God dealt with the rest. Jill, my icon, ma'am, what the fuck? No, please. I sent you a DM. Well, you don't have us hanging well, don't leave us hanging. What was what what it say? <laughs> then okay, I love you, Jill, but he has so many domestic abuses because it's ridiculous. We can't look past that. She says, I love you too. I'm not here to fight anyone's battles. If since women hear the stories, they should avoid that street. Running backwards and moving traffic makes no sense. Therapy for every damn body. But why is it that you feel like, I, I'm just, that's all I'm going to keep asking. I have the same question. 
why do you feel like you need to stand up in front of Chris Brown? What, what, what was the reason? I'm like Cardi B. What was the reason? What was the reason, Jilly? What was the reason? Miss Jill Scott, the gifted, the chosen people carry a load that goes beyond the imagination. Some people can't handle the art of artistry. Henceforth, they are given the gift of it. They aren't given the gift of it. But people like yourself, your life and insight are an inspiration to us all. Jehovah God, Allah is a grace, is kind and gracious to us all. We're all children learning as we grow. Some paths are rocky, but worth it. Some paths are easy, just like soft serve, but will break you. No path is perfect. We tie our shoestrings and learn how not to fall. Somebody said, obviously, Jilly from Philly has been hacked. No way my good sis has this hot take. Talented doesn't mean make him a good person, sis. That man is an abuser. So many of us said no, thank you, ages ago. Throwing your own career in the toilet to cape for a serial abuser for what? This is humiliating for you. Yes, Jill Scott, that man is extremely talented. Thank you for being bold. What's bold about standing in front of an abusive man? And like I said on Twitter, if he turned around and called Jill Scott a fat bitch, then what y'all gonna do? What y'all gonna do? Because if he abuses the people close to him, what you think he gonna do to some woman on the internet who sings and is from Philadelphia? He don't give a fuck. That's the problem now. I said, hey, twin, this ain't it. It's not. Jill Scott, this ain't it. I said, you know you don't have to have a dog in the fight. Y'all only think about Rihanna when it comes to Chris, but Karuchi legitimately had a five-year restraining order against him. It just lifted in 2022. You never win when you go up for an abusive man. And then I said, just, and I said to someone, just because Chris Brown can backflip on a beat and nilly rock down the street, everybody wants to act like he cannot be an abusive terrorist on the other end. That's why I tell y'all, we are both. We are both. We all have the ability to lean into behavior like Chris Brown. None of us are exempt. Everybody can if they wanted to. It is a choice. It's also a choice to stand up in front of a person who has a pattern of, of abuse. I can see if at 19 years old, Chris Brown and Rihanna got into a domestic violence situation on the way back from the Grammy Awards or whatever the fuck they were on their way back. I don't give a fuck about the details, whatever. They were on their way back and they got into a fight and they were 19 years old and we have never heard anything else about Chris Brown. That would be a different story. That would be a different story if we haven't heard anything else and we're still down here talking about Rihanna. But no, there are other women who share similar and like stories about how they've experienced Christopher Maurice Brown. And you'd rather ignore all of that and stand in front of, you, in front of him with your fucking cape whooshing in the wind after you done whirled around in a phone booth. For what? For what? Why? Like somebody on, online said, the, the people don't understand nuance. Ain't nothing nuanced about being able to understand that a talented, creative person can also be a violent, harmful terrorist. We know that. It's why are you standing in front of him, defending him? Why do you have to make these proclamations for at any time? Either keep it in the group text or keep it in the drafts. But why is this 
I'm going to stand on the in the public square and say how talented Chris Brown is while everybody else is like, dog, hey, hey, everybody, look over here, look over here, like you're going to distract people. No, the, the internet remembers and what and they remember even as far back as 10 years ago when you got your ass down to the internet and defended Bill Cosby, Jill Scott. I don't give a fuck if you both from Philadelphia, goddammit. You don't get on the internet and defend a man who drugs and rapes women. I don't give a damn what he what kind of ribbon or shit tassel he he put over to the other side for you. I don't care. What makes you want to do that? What in you makes you want to do that? Then she came back. Girl. Then she came back. Hold on. Let me go down to the thing. Somebody reminded me about Bill Cosby. She did defend Bill Cosby. The wonderful Bill Cosby and me, North Philly all day. She posted a picture of him. This was back in 2013. The internet never forgets. Then she comes back and says, I walked away, came back, Googled, read tweets, listened to friends, and considered the state of us as a whole. Some lead with love. You gave me perspective to consider and directive. Thank you. Some of you only want the highs of war. You may have your war. Y'all act like just because somebody said the cases were dropped does not mean that the actions didn't happen. The case being dropped means they not, weren't being, they're not going to be able to charge you with a crime. It doesn't mean that the actions didn't happen. Why do y'all be acting so dumb? That's what I want to know. Is it, do you, is it intentional? Because if it's intentional, that's whack as hell. But if you really dumb, then I'm going to give you some grace. Why do y'all be acting like that? Like you don't understand that just because if there's no crime in the law book, a code of law written down doesn't mean the actions didn't happen. Trayvon Martin is still dead. He killed that boy. Was he criminally held responsible? No, but he doesn't mean the boy is not dead. Doesn't mean he comes back to life. Like, come on, stop playing. Just because somebody didn't get charged with R-A-P-E-I-N-G, R-A-P-I-N-G in somebody doesn't mean the act didn't happen. It just means that they didn't get charged under a code of law. Goodness gracious. That's why I'm like, do y'all be stupid for real? That's all I've been wanting to know. I've been wanting to know. Where's my microphone? Is it, do y'all be stupid for real? Tell me. Girl, and I said today, I had to say today, I had to note to self, I said, okay, Flag on the play, bitch. These people are not going to wor worry me today. I have to remember I'm observing patriarchy and I'm observing patriarchy at play where women and men alike, and they, they stand out in front of men to protect their image, no matter how harmful the man has been and abusive the man has been to people. It is a programmed, conditioned response. I have to remember that. And when these women stand up and defend these men like that, I have to remember you are operating from a program. You've been programmed to worship men. That's why you stand in front of like, because a logical, sane person with a fully formed functional brain wouldn't stand beside somebody who harms people. It just doesn't make sense. You have to be operating under a programming because like what, it doesn't make, I don't give a damn who it is, the, your relation to the person or whatever. It doesn't matter. This person is harming people. But you feel you need to stand up in front of everybody and be like, he's talented in this. For what? For what? For what? For what? I said, girl, gone. You decided to publicly support and praise a man who harms women. And 10 years ago, you defended a man who drugs and rapes women. You ain't canceled, but you need to reevaluate your black male worship. And a lot of these women do it. It's Gen X, it's Baby Boomer, it's Millennial. It's a lot of male worshipers in every generation. But when you get the ones who run around and enforce the shit, that's when it, it's like, girl, shut up. You don't need to stand up for, what are you standing up for Chris Brown for? Do you know he would not do that for you? 
when you was running around and your breasts were exposed on the internet remember when they was the people hacked the people and jill scott's titties was running around the internet do you think any of the men were like jill scott is a wonderful talented artist People have their roads to walk, girl. And then you want to hit the people with a little poetry to make it seem like you said something. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. And then you like to throw, then they love to throw God in it. Throw God in it, girl. Sprinkle a little Jesus on it. Jehovah, Allah, whatever the fuck, girl. Sprinkle a little Jesus juice on it. <laughs> That'll fuck them up. Girl, y'all get on my nerves. No snaps for you, girl no snaps none at all girl mm -mm, mm -mm. some some guy says i've noticed this in conversations with female family members and co-workers in discussions about diddy and r kelly it's weird to defend these men. My mother, born 1965, said she felt bad for Diddy. And I was like, no, ma'am, I feel bad for the alleged victims and his daughters. Now, this is a guy talking about his mother. Okay, so this woman, Quana AMC, Quana MC, Quana MC on Twitter says, Jill Scott and Badu come from an era of women who always thought the girls were the problem and men can do no wrong. But please understand, there are women in every era who believe this that is by design who believe that the girls are always wrong they fast they shouldn't be dressing like that da, 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 da. those are women who are programmed to operate from a male perspective a male lens everything's coming out their mouth that's why it's like different aspects of it like you have the pick me the male identified woman the mammy you have all they're like different aspects of women at different stages of their male worship like for real for real and there are groups of women especially that's why that's why to me i don't like the term auntie because i feel like it's a dig at a woman who is coming from an old operating system and although i am gen x bitch i up updated my operating operating system i don't I don't do I don't put on a cake for nobody. I ain't whirling around in a phone booth for no man. I'm always going to give the woman the benefit of the doubt first. I'm always going to be on the woman's side. You're going to have to prove to me that she's wrong because I whatever she said he did. I believe I believe her. You're going to have to prove her wrong. Because history tells me that the majority of the time she's telling the truth. That's why somebody like Giselle is dangerous for stuff like that. That's exactly why Candace said that to her, because there are women who will lie uh, and, and use words. But I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and listen to what you have to say. When you, when you said, especially in the Giselle situation, when you said he didn't do anything, it, but you still tried to imply he did something trying to change it over and over again girl that's why you make it hard because majority of the time the women are telling the truth out of 10 times it might be one lie one lie maybe less than one lie out of 10 10 cases so yes they make it hard but i'm going to always give the woman the benefit of the doubt what she said he did it until till y'all prove she's a liar until y'all prove she's a liar because everybody ain't lying everybody ain't lying on chris brown everybody ain't lying on trey songs everybody ain't lying on russell simmons diddy whoever the fuck the other man all men yes all men all of them i saw two stories on line over the weekend about a, a child abuse I, these men uh, sa and these like under two year old children. Yes, all men. I'm not giving the motherfuckers the benefit of the doubt. Because actually, when you look at history, it shows you that you shouldn't give them the benefit of the doubt. And you shouldn't stand in front of them when they're when people are saying, he hurt me, he hurt me, he harmed me, he did this, he did this. Don't stand in front of him. What are you standing in front of him for? What are you protecting? like winter talking about trey songs you've heard all these women say these things about trey songs he ain't never done it to me he ain't never done it to me until he does because you are not exempt 
from his violence. Because again, if he would harm the closest people to him, he would harm you. Trust. I've spoken about this several times, but those 1965 to 1980 aunties, 25 years of women, right, are something else. It's I always side eye them. When abusers are highlighted and faces are saved, it does leave other people to say, well, maybe he's not that bad of a guy. People don't sign up to be abused, but this air of who are we to judge is, is a way that it continues to happen. It's not a man versus woman era. It's time to stop the BS. Um, it's a global fact that younger generations have been more vocal about SA and domestic violence. We don't need to argue that when Google is right there. Also, I don't know your mother and we can adore these women and side eye them. If anyone cares to research, most abuse against women wasn't punishable until 1992 in some countries. This is all I'm saying. They, they have a little more empathy for the successful ones. Like we millennials are, we're all fast ass, fast ass or tail, fast tail girls to them for growing breasts, coochie, Incense said girls needed to dress like handmaids, not to entice male teachers. I remember. I've been trying to reply to this tweet the whole, but this whole thing took a turn. I wish we could have been protected more or even given an explanation to why they wanted us to tone it down. They probably thought it would protect us, but we know that predators don't give a fuck about the looks. They care about the power of it. It's the Jezebel trope and its side effects. That's their way of countering the abuse we face. If you don't, if you do X, Y, Z, it won't happen to you. Now, you know, that age group of aunties think they can do no wrong. And again, when, as we grow and age, the next generations are going to have a lot of critique of their millennial parents and their, <laughs> and the parents, Gen Y parents, they're going to have critiques. No generation is above the critique. But when I tell you baby boomers did a number on the generations after them and the remnants of that affect the older Gen X, I am Gen X, but I don't carry those kind of approaches and ideologies. I had to unlearn. I was never really a pick me, more of a male identified woman. Like I saw the male's point of view. I laughed at jokes uh, uh, like Corey Holcomb, basically. I laughed at his jokes. Like that's where my mind was. I didn't give that. I always gave niggas the blues, always gave them the blues. But I still, when it was time to think about things, I had a bias. I had a bias and it was in favor of men. And that's just the environment that I grew around, even though I rejected it. Like I tell y'all all the time, going around, especially on my dad's side, it didn't happen on my mom's side, but on my dad's side, very much patriarchal, even though the women are really and truly running the shit, they put the men on pedestals and worship the men, even to the point where I used to get called lazy because I would sit amongst the men while all the women were cleaning up after like little holiday parties and stuff like that. Like literally being servants. I did not, I couldn't get jiggy with that. And while sitting amongst men, me being pointed out and told, you're lazy basically for not cleaning up after these grown ass men. I rejected all of that shit to this day. I don't fucking play that shit at all. If I do something for you niggas, cause I'm being nice. Not because I feel like I have to and none of that shit. Cause I, I'm just being nice girl. I don't like, I don't play none of that shit at all. It's not the majority. A lot of us handled things different way, but we didn't go crying to support groups forming DV organizations. We beat fire out and stabbed up or shot up our abusers and kept it pushing stronger, wiser, and not for the shits. Move forward, being able to steer clear of it. My post is general, but I don't think crying to support groups is all the new generations are doing. Um, women need support because a, the, the, a lot of ways, a lot of this abuse happens and people are okay with it is the, the, um, what goes, 
what goes on in your in our house stays in our house don't air your dirty laundry all of that is to mask abuse all of that is and if you see that in your home you're going to think that it's normal and people are always going to protect men you hear your family members talking about situations and it always seems like the woman was at fault in a situation where it's clear that the man was at fault the woman is always to blame even in a infidelity situation because you should have known better these men you know how these men are and all of this stuff that is a that is a programming that you have to unlearn and some of these women and it does come in stages some of these women haven't unlearned that like the erica badus who tells girls to wear their outfits a certain way so they don't entice men or standing on the public square coming to chris brown's defense when it's well documented that he has a pattern of abusive behavior being around trey songs alone thinking that it wouldn't happen to you when there are too many stories of women saying he assaulted them whether he's been criminally civilly or whatever charged doesn't mean that the act did not happen period that's all that's it that's it and whatever generation there's always going to be a group of women who are not ever they'll never be deprogrammed and it's almost just like you have to be like did that ever play out in the handmaid's tale where they were trying to get the women together and some of the women were like no we're we're fine with like operating in under a system like this i can't remember remind me please help me remember if that kind of scenario played out she was getting on my nerves because she kept going back but going back to kind of save people out to get people out of it but i know there were some women who are there are always going to be some women who are just like okay with enforcing rules that also oppress them and it's just it's just by design and those women you can't you can unwind some eyes and you can shake some shoulders but some women are gone they're too far they're too far gone and they're just you're just gonna you can't change them when you're when you're at the point of coming to defense of people who harm people like that's just like out of the box and then for then to turn around and be like because jesus forgives and all this other dumb shit girl shut up shut up and my whole thing that's what i said online i'm like why does she feel like she needs to extend forgiveness to someone who didn't do anything to her like girl what's wrong with you why are you the one who has to expel a uh, energy of forgiveness for chris brown he didn't do nothing to you you should be more concerned with the people that he harmed than him girl what he'll be all right he'll be okay why are you defending him he would never do it for you just like that lady the other day that was yelling at that girl about the black men specifically girl shut up you sound stupid they would never do that for you you sound dumb that's why, that's why i think it's like everybody understands nuance we get it we understand that we understand that people can be good and give back and then on the other end be terrorists i mean look at you can look at any fucking documentary and you could see that a lot of these people who abuse people operate on both sides and they do it as a mask they use i'm going to give back to a school i'm going to do this i'm going to do that but then on the other end of it they're harming people you understand what i'm saying see i said i'm in that age group and male identified pick me mammy bs is played out they're stuck in trying to operate on old operating systems older gen x baby boomers and silent generation did a number on a lot of us i'm gen x zinio and i've hated it for a long time I hated it for a long motherfucking time now and for me that's where i am with it i this is where i'm with it if you're not an ally to women and you are in support of people who terrorize women and femmes i'm not i can't no period just period 
what else is going on girl what time is it let's be done with this let's make another video <laughs> the queen of nothing just be doing just don't be doing nothing Sheree, shout out to Sheree Whitfield, the most consistent and authentic housewife in history. She wasn't paying bills and lying in season one, and she's still not paying bills and lying in season 15. Give her her flowers. Shout out to T with Dre. Then I said, I ain't never seen a woman get fired, rehired, fired, rehired, and still can't make nothing come to fruition. Give her her flowers, child. <laughs> girl, you better, you better reach the, the achievements of failure, girl. <laughs> Sheree is a joke and y'all see what you y'all see Simon is down there giving Porsche to the blues that's what she did that's what you get bitch I'm not gonna call it karma because I don't believe karma is a punishment system but bitch that's what the fuck you get that's what you get and then Fallon's old fucking scrunched up face ass is down to the internet talking about um Portia and Simon was messing around for that long when they did that fist bump girl we already knew what it was we already knew that that some cut extra was down there laying it low and spreading it wide for Simon Guabadia, if that is his last name, motherfucking ass, scammer ass. And they want to act like, I, I, listen, I want to see what was said on camera. When they were filming their scenes, their couple scenes, I want to see too. I want to know what was said. I want to know. It's a lot of things that they cut from the show that we don't see, but if they're just filming and filming and filming, I want to see the shit that they was talking about. I want to see, cause Portia is so, girl. The other day I was, <laughs> I was listening to Rodney and he was talking about how y'all was down here talking about love wins and all this other stuff and going up for Portia and going up for the fantasy. You know, just had your seatbelts buckled on Mister Toad's wild ride of delusion and fantasy, all in Portia's world, just going through fucking mazes and shit, all dizzy eyed and goofy and shit. Oh, love wins, girl. When I tell you, I cannot stand that lady. I cannot stand it. It's girl, because it's so late. Then you quit your jobs and then you're like, oh, it's getting taken. It's getting go away, back away. Like somebody wants that man. And then you think you did something because you made him get some serial number T. Girl, girl, get out of here. I can't stand Portia. I cannot stand Portia or Simon. That's what the fuck she gets. Sorry. Didn't nobody tell you. That's like you literally saw the way he did Fallon. You saw how she left with nothing. He gave her a condo and what, $15,000 or something like that? You about to get less than that. He said, I don't want you film filming in my house. This is my house. I don't know how the hell you thought this was a marital home when you moved into my shit, bitch. You moved into my shit and didn't change no paperwork. That's your bad, dummy. That's your bad. And don't put nobody like, shout out to T.S. Madison, who was talking about if, if whoever I'm with, in my fucking last will and testament, if the shit goes down, whoever is in my home, they got third, 24 hours, I'm about to say 30 days, 48 hours to vacate. Get the fuck out. This is not your shit. This is not your, do not, let me tell you something, ladies. Never prove your love by giving a man access to your money and assets. You, I'm going to say it again ladies never prove your love and gentlemen never prove your love to another person by giving them access to your money and assets absolutely especially if you acquire them before them absolutely fucking not girl you see my thing moving not <laughs> Girl, no way. No way. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. I have to tuck it. Come on, tuck it. You better tuck it. Girl, absolutely not. I wish I would. I wish I would. Don't you ever. I'm telling you, ladies. And they, they, they throw that love shit in there. And then now you looking crazy when it's time to divorce. And he, he like, I'm not leaving. Girl, no, you getting the fuck out. You're getting the fuck out. I don't care. Absolutely not. Do I need to say it again? Ladies, gentlemen, non-binary folk, don't ever prove your love by giving someone access to your money and, and assets. I don't give a fuck. No. 
whatever we can get acquired together okay fine but everything you don't need to don't worry about it here <laughs> there ain't no talking about it i'm not gonna prove my love to you by giving you access to my money and my assets I remember this nigga tried that with me one time. I was when I told him I was when I told you I was lying to him about what I was like, here, yeah, this is how much I make and stuff like that. Girl, I know you, you nigga, I might have been born at night, but it wasn't last night, bitch. That's why they get the young girl, because they know the motherfuckers is not thinking, they don't know nothing about it. They, oh, you gotta prove your love. You would you would you wouldn't get a prenup. You know, motherfucker. No, 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 no. <laughs> I know ain't that much love in the world, nigga. No. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. What we acquire together, bitch, that's fair game. But whatever I had before you, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Like I was just talking to Nathaniel. He what he was watching um Candy's wedding special, her commercial she had down there on Bravo. And she, when Todd didn't act like he didn't want to sign that prenup, that's one thing I'm gonna give Sugar Mama. She's gonna protect her assets. Why do you think you deserve any part of any part of what I have? You won't sign this prenup, or this is just about to be a big old party. It ain't gonna be no wedding. That's one thing I give it to Sugar Mama about it. You're not getting close to the money, honey. And not these coins. <laughs> no, no, no. Absolutely not. And it doesn't matter, ladies. It don't matter if you have whatever you have is more than him and he want to get his fucking little greedy hands on his little grimy little dusty fingers on it uh-uh no 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 <laughs> don't do it no 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 you won't be able to do it not me don't give him don't give him don't give him access to the money girl okay i gotta go we're gonna make another video take care of each other protect your energy and your assets peace <laughs>